Hi, my name is Muhammad Izan Uzai bin Arifai and we will be presenting to you guys an article, a research of the chosen title that we have picked over the past mid sem break. So, abstract, hypothesis and objectives. What are those? And we'll see later. So, the first one is abstract. So, from the abstract, what we know, uh, it's basically the summarization of the research. So, as you can see from your right side of your screen is the QR code for the article, for the PDF that we have chosen which is the title is metabolic marker of kidney function decline in patients with diabetes all right so what are the major discoveries that has stated in the abstract let's see so the major discoveries are that aconitic acid and 3-HIBA could identify uh, individuals with diabetes faster uh, which is a high risk for GFR or glomerular filtrate uh, rate decline the second one is that the above discovery, which I stated before, the number one right here, is that it will improve clinical care and targeted therapies because as you all know that the diabetic people is basically <coughs> treated with insulin. Okay. The third one is that the usage of urine metabolites, metabolomics, okay, the topic today, uh, will provide better insights to DKD or kidney disease, or right, diabetic kidney disease progression. So you can see from the below part of the purple shape is that that is the chemical formula of aconitic acid and as for the ones below me these two this one is cis form of aconitic acid as for this one is the trans form of aconitic acid okay moving on so the next one is hypothesis what is the hypothesis for this research okay so by using metabolomics or in this case specifically urine metabolites we could provide insight to the biochemical pathway that is associated with kidney dysfunction as the kidney uh, generally is responsible for concentrating and excreting a variety of metabolites from the human body. So kidney is basically is the waste factory, the recycle factory or just a filtration factory of the body which is very important. Without kidney, we could just die in, in like what, a few days of toxicity. Okay, so moving on, that is the hypothesis. What are the objectives? Okay, we have two objectives in this research, which is... <coughs> okay, you guys can read the quote from me. <laughs> don't, don't quote me on that. So, objective one. What is the objective? Obtaining and analyzing biomarkers that will provide reliable evidence of future diabetic kidney disease or DKD. So, biomarkers are a, an essential thing in, in, bio, in biology because without biomarkers, biologists or... Uh, molecular biologists, we, we don't know where to start uh, to analyze or even even analyze our nucleotide sequence. So biomarkers are very important. That is why the first objective of this research is emphasizing on the uh, finding of biomarkers. All right. So next one, what is the second objective? So the second objective is to identify the 13 stated urine metabolites in the PDF article, you guys can read that, that had levels reduced in DKD or diabetic kidney disease compared with healthy controls or basically just saying a healthy person. So we are analyzing between those with DKD and those uh, that are healthy. So those 13 urine metabolites are very important in this research that will provide insight uh, as to whether this person has DKD a high risk DKD, uh, 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 average DKD, or just like a mild DKD. Alright, so those are the uh, two objectives of this uh, of this research. So I think that is all uh, from me. I am Muhammad Izan Zabin Arifai. I will be transferring to another person. Okay, goodbye. Next, I'll be presenting on the three major methods used in this study. First method used study cohort. Study cohort used to investigate the causes of disease and to establish links between risk factors and health outcomes. The study cohort involved a group of people who share a defining characteristic. For instance, in the article, recruited a racially and ethnically diverse group of adults aged 21 to 74 years with a broad spectrum of kidney disease severity. The advantages of these methods are can be study more than one outcome, can get complete description of the experience occurring after exposure, and it is useful in examining rare exposure. 
Next, the non-targeted metabolomics, which is comprehensive and a high throughput use to quantify of the relative ion abundance. The method carried out using MPS3XT autosampler coupled to an Agilent 6550QTOF mass spectrometer. The non-targeted targeted metabolism profiling in urine was performed for 1,001 samples collected at study entry and was freeze at negative 80 degrees Celsius and thawed at room temperature. Lastly, the EGFR, which is the estimated glomerular filtration rate method used to determine if you have kidney disease and if so, what stage. EGFR measures your kidney's ability to filter toxins or waste from your blood. As for the results, Table 1 shows that the 100,001 participants had a mean age of 59.89 years, 44% of them were white, 44% were women and 57% smoked more than 100 cigarettes in lifetime. Besides, they also had mean body mass index of 34.19 kg per meter square, hemoglobin level of 7.57% and EGFR of 40.59 ml per minute per 1.73 meter square. Majority of them had severe albuminuria which contribute to 69% and hypertension with percentage of 93%. During follow-up, mean EGFR slope was negative 1.83 per year. 359 participants experienced KFRT. Median time to KFRT was 7.45 years from the time of entry to the CRIC study. In the final model, after adjusting for clinical variables, levels of metabolite 3-hydroxyisobutyrate and 3 methylcrotoniglycine had a significant negative association with EGFR slope, whereas citric and aconitic acid were positively associated. Hence, 3 hydroxy isobutyrate and aconitic acid levels were associated with higher and lower risk for KFRT. In this article, results are interpreted by using analytical approach such as stepwise selection and cross-validation. Several clinical metabolite models were developed for EGFR slope as the outcome using stepwise selection and penalized regression and further tested on the time to KFRT outcome. A best cross-validated prognosis model was selected based on high prediction accuracy for EGFR slope and high concordance statistic for incident KFRT. Also, according to the author, by using the CRIC equation to estimate GFR didn't change their results. Hence, they report the results with the Chronic Kidney Disease Epidemiology Collaboration equation as it is widely used in clinical and research settings. In my opinion, the results were interpreted by the authors in such a very detailed way. All the data, including both significant and insignificant, also have been stated. Besides, the procedures or tests conducted in order to obtain the results are reliable and valid. The authors also use tables and diagrams to explain the result helps the readers to deeply understand the information and give them more insight about the topics. Hence, the results interpreted in this article are well structured and no need any unnecessary changes. As a conclusion, more than 90% of adult population with diabetes reportedly having type 2 diabetes cases along with the 40% of chronic kidney disease. We do agree with the conclusion derived from the author as urine metabolite may offer insight into DKD progression. 3-hydroxyisobutyric acid, or also known as 3-HIBA, was reduced in passion with established DKD in the previous study with small sample size. However, higher 3 HEPA level was detected in the present study which associated with the progressive DKD and time to incident KFRT. 
elevated plasma level of BCA830 and 3 heba have been shown to be associated with obesity and incident type 2 diabetes in human and also in rodents. The study stated that the clinical variable only model had competitively good discrimination compared with other metabolite models. Now, I'm gonna talk about the authors. The authors indeed consider other supporting the evidence. They use the details on the rationale and design of the CRIC study that have been previously published. The authors use a lot of reference to explain the correlation and offer more insight on the molecular mechanism behind metabolite levels and BKD. Okay, next, I'm gonna tell you about the limitation of the research. First, because BKD progression is so heterogeneous, there may be subgroups for whom the signature are, are not optimal. Second, non-targeted metabolomics using flow injection analysis cannot tell the difference between metabolites with the same sum formula and only reports relative abundance changes. Next, because normal statistical methods may be utilized, there are two-stage approach to modeling renal disease progression through EGFR slope has the advantage of being simple to interpret and evaluate. When they are missing data or irregularly spaced Repeated measure, this strategy may result in a loss of efficiency. Finally, the drop in EGFR may not always be linear. Despite the linearity assumption, the EGFR slope is simple to interpret biologically and may be used with typical statistical modeling approaches. Importantly, the CRIC study discovered that EGFR slope can be used as a predictor for renal disease development. Thank you.